Yo, so I told y'all it was coming. Charleston White interview loading, bro. It's loading. I thought Say Cheese was going to get it first. Uh, real life uh, street stars, they own it. They own it. I see as soon as that shit happens, they say, hey, when can you come? You know what I'm saying? On my soul and talk about the fight. Because this shit just happened, what, three days ago? About three days ago. They ain't playing. They like, man, we want to run it up today. Even though Say Cheese is going to get him, he's going to repeat the same story. Um... Damn. Oh, when I got, because it's crazy, because I was on the hill, I was on the internet, like, man, I feel like I'm going to react right now. What can I react to? This is the first thing that popped up. I'm like, I'm looking at it. Like, bro, this this fake, this clickbait, this ain't never the real, this can't be the real thing, man. Um, Y'all tell me in the comments, do y'all think Charleston was right or wrong? If you watch me react to, to the fight, I said technically he's wrong because he threw the pot first. I don't care what they were saying to him. I don't care what he was saying to them, but he threw the pot, so that's what made it blow up. If he wouldn't have threw the pot, I think them niggas would have just been talking that Saturday neck, bro. Um, also, when I was watching that shit, I'm like, bro, put the money up. The money should be protected at all costs, because that motherfucker was a knight, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, let's get into this to this interview. I'm going to watch the whole interview. I ain't got shit to do, so let's get into it and see what's up. I don't know what time it is. Real life street stars. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> Unscathed. Unscathed and uh, 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 pretty boy Floyd. I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tom Brady. Sack me like a mother. God. I said, I said, bro. I said, in the, uh, when I watched, like, damn, do that. So it's trying to speak that motherfucker up, dude. Hit his ass like a sack, bro. Oh, my soul. We're going to get into it, man. It's crazy because, uh, you know, real life, man, we um, we said, man, Charleston is a guy who we normally bring, for the last three years, we started the inter the year off with a Charleston White interview. And um, we said, all right, let's try to figure out how to get him back in for, you know, January 1st, December 31st, something like that, New Year's Eve. And then this shit happened. And then this shit happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh. this shit happened. <laughs> so we, man, man, let's go get right into it, man. Because you know, it's funny. You you had said um, you was gonna go live, talk about it, um, and thank you for thank you first and foremost for being able to come to this platform first to even get his story. Uh, we want to give you flowers now. Uh, hit the hit the flower angle on them niggas. <laughs> Boom! Want to give you flowers now, boy? <laughs> <laughs> don't throw them. I'm about to say, hand them to me. Don't throw them at me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't throw them. Shit, goddamn it. But we want to give you flowers now, man. Um, and uh, just actually ask you, man. Um, first of all, uh, that's been the first time a nigga's put his hands on you on camera, at least by physically touching you out of everything you said. Uh, yeah. So let's talk uh, about it, man. We, um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let, let's run through that, man. Uh, what I would love to do is, uh, this is Crockett, Texas, uh, for those that don't know. Um, in the you know between Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston, uh, right there in the middle, um, you know technically middle ground. Uh, if you can see, I ain't gonna lie. Well, I feel like Charleston fried right now. If y'all don't know what I mean by fried, has hell right now. I don't know why I'm getting that like vibe through this shit. Like he fried. <laughs> Yo, tell us how this show came about, bro. And um, what was your thought process going into it? You know, because I believe it's just you, big dude, and. And and and, and do better. Mm -hmm. Tell us your thought process going into this show, man. And or he just tagged. Uh, we gonna we gonna walk. We gonna dissect this thing. Uh, f fitted fitted hat fitted hat cowboys is is uh, uh they're like a trail ride group group. You know uh you know trail ride guys. They they got their own lane, their own world. Uh, and, and them niggas got plenty of money. Uh, the trail ride niggas is is is, is where the rappers is trying to be. It's facts. Uh, so you know, uh, so one of the promoters is from Crockett, but he live here in Dallas. Uh, so so uh, he and I is doing a lot of uh, a lot of promotion ventures together, uh, a lot of concerts and events. So uh, he he booked me. He booked me, very professional, uh, professional brother, uh, very detail oriented. Uh, so, you know, he, he, I was real comfortable in, in doing business with him. Uh, this show was booked for how long outside of today? Like it, It's months? been like two months. Okay. So, so, so this is an annual event that they do uh, once a year. So this is called the annual 
uh, Fitted Hat Cowboys Christmas. You know, so it's an annual event that they do. Uh, tickets go. Tickets went on sale. Uh, like pretty much uh, early on. Yeah. Yeah, folks is tired as hell. But I wonder when a situation like this happened, do he tax more for the interview? Because I be seeing he be putting his price out there all, all the time. Ten K, you can book Charleston White, bro. But I feel like when it's an event and everybody want it, like the demand of it, he got to be like, man, I need fifteen for this story. Man, Imagine man. if the web came with. But yeah, it's, I'm saying he fried. Obviously, he just tired as hell. He like, man. I really want to go to sleep like motherfucker, but I got to get in the back end. You know what I'm saying? Sold out. <laughs> 700. Uh, VIP section sold out. Uh, I'm thinking Crockett, Texas, right up the road. Uh, shit, come on, homie, let's go. I would go by myself. Uh, I went to comedy show by myself uh, with no security, no nothing. Yeah, that's what we, we spoke to Dewberry. We asked normally, who is normally with you? On these comedy venues, even on a TK Kirk and stuff, like uh, either me or Dubair. Okay. Yeah, me and Dubair. Uh. So, uh, nah, homie. Uh, nigga, I ain't, I ain't got no concern. Uh. But I'm more relaxed. You know what I'm saying? I, I, ain't, I ain't as tactical as I was a year ago. Uh, because of the money a nigga making. Uh. Oh, uh, oh! Don't tell me this shit like waking him up a little bit, bro. That shit opening his eyes a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, I'm real soft and weak uh, on my uh, on my tactics, homie. Uh, because a nigga having fun with this shit, and and and, and, and I don't I don't get threatened in real life. Uh, it's been love at the shows. Yeah, it's it's been love in in, in real life. My. M- I had a revolution mind before I got into entertainment. So I was a revolutionary minded nigga. So I taught revolution, uh, uh, I taught revolution war talk. Uh, now nigga, uh, I'm having fun, like an entertainer. So and, and some would say I sold out. Uh, this is what a nigga want to sell out for. Uh, waking up doing what he want to do every day, having fun. When he wanna have fun. So, so nigga, uh, so my thing is, come on, dude, let's go, man. We got a comedy show. We just going right up the road. Uh, so nigga, it, it wasn't no concern. We get there. Uh, I'm assessing the situation. Okay, it's trail ride. Uh, this is a grown folks crowd. Uh, the the show, all the hotels are sold out in the town. So these are grown folks coming, homie. So for them niggas to be sitting in there with that, them, them basketball jerseys on, uh, they stood out to me anyway, mm-hmm. off the top. Did so, you assess the crowd prior? Uh, uh-uh. Uh, they sat in the middle, so they stood out. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know why them niggas were there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why them niggas were there. I mean, them niggas were them, them. Look, his vibration's so low, bro, that it's making me think like this shit really affected him. I don't know if it's cause he tired as hell, once again for the other time, cause that's what I kind of feel like he is, but his vibration just seemed low. Like he ain't coming here to, to joke about the shit for real, even though he might turn up a little bit. But he just, his vibration seems so low that making me think like, damn, this shit real. Cause um, me and somebody was saying like, this shit could possibly be fake. Cause I was in the back of my shit like, is this shit fake? Cause I know how the internet is. But his his mood and shit is making me think like, all right, yeah, all right. With them twelve hundred dollar boots. Uh, now this was a high dollar elite elite extravagant event for for black people in the in the trail ride world, homie. Uh, so them niggas ruined a, a magnificent night. Uh, yeah. I left my gun at home. I didn't take no mace. Uh, I bought a knife when I was down there. Uh, but we ain't had no weapons on. We were just going to go do a show and then come right back. So in your mind, knowing who you are, the notoriety you have, yeah, you was feeling comfortable in this scenario? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been feeling comfortable lately. 
So I'm telling you, I've been, I've been, I've been laxed. Uh, I had a show in Fort Lauderdale last week. Get seven hundred dollars back on Google. Yeah, that man seeing it. Like man, I've been this money been making me think I'm a little bit untouchable. Then what I ra, ra. to to not even have no weapons on him is is new. I thought he, I thought that shit came with the outfit. Uh, I went without Dewberry, no security, no weapons. People say that's crazy. Uh, it's actually not crazy because <laughs> he's a regular person doing his job. Like you should be able to go places and do things as a normal individual. Like it ain't, it ain't too far fetched. He is not a regular person. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Uh, uh, George Zimmerman is right. <laughs> Live his motherfucking life everywhere he go. Uh, so so yeah, nah, homie. So uh, the show before that uh. In, in Sykes, in Missouri, it was a similar situation where I got into it with some guys that was heckling in the crowd, and it turned ugly like this. It just didn't get physical. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so uh, I just didn't got too comfortable. So as you said, you know, we we, we peeped your life, and you kind of gave us a rundown. Um, uh, you you have a set. I'm assuming there's some people that goes on before you. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 for the most part, home, I've been, the, I've been the headlining act, so everybody going before me. And these guys in the crowd, as you stated, um, or someone, I don't know who it was, but they screaming my ties. That's another guy. That's another guy. So that wouldn't even, that wouldn't even Kobe Bryant. No, nah, that wasn't Kobe Bryant and Lamar Odom. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, <laughs> the, the nigga that was screaming my ties was a, was a washed up old nigga. Who probably don't even know Jay Prince. Probably don't even know Jay Prince. He hardly mob ties. And it's him, his buddy, and his buddy's girl. So of course I'm gonna go in and say, oh nigga, y'all double, y'all triple dating. You ain't got no woman. You done paid to come see me to holler mob ties. Nigga, you probably ain't even got no woman. So I shamed him. And then when he stood up, he had on a rhinestone belt. Oh shit. <laughs> 2003. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and and I'm saying these are black men at least in their 40s, their 30s. How the nigga, you on Jane Prince Dick, you out in mob ties, nigga? Nigga, let me tell you how weak mob ties is. There's no such thing as a mob ties. It's a fictitious name. They're not a mob. Uh mob ties is like uh the white boy from Malibu most wanted. Jay Prince Jr. and his son, they, 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 they like the Malibu for most one of them. They're not no real gangsters. Uh, they're nothing like the Italian mafias like we've been seeing in the movies. So why? Who gives a fuck about a mob tie? So I'm ignoring the nigga, but he's steady standing on stage while I'm on stage. So Nick, We all know them kids. On Instagram, they don't even be kids. They probably be 40 year old people who say they 4K Trey, who say they OTL when it be coming to, to Dirk and Young Boy, or just saying that they in some shit that they not and just writing that shit just, that shit just be lame as hell, bro. So for a 40 year old man or 30 and up to be, 40 year old man is just crazy, bro. It's just crazy. Nigga, I how nigga, fuck mob ties. Nigga, I done said fuck this. Nigga, you niggas ain't. So I got these two dudes. Saying, take your mask off. Talk right. Uh, y'all together? Uh, no, nah, this is my, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> So he hollered, no, nah, this is my nephew. But he got his arm like this while he, while he talking. So I'm saying, you two niggas done paid to come see me? To, to do all this? With no woman? Oh, man, you didn't go fuck each other tonight. So the woman comes sit in his lap. And say, oh no, this this my woman, this this my man. So I say, hey sister, uh, you might need to watch nephew and all. I'm putting that dick on nephew where he got his arm around. So I said, man, that nigga got mad, and that when he stood. Yeah. Why? Why would they even try folks like that, man? Why they even try to troll him? And once again, since he said he had line, why you really buy the tickets, bro? Why you really went? You fake a daughter's man. That you came to see him, or you rock with him, a door probably the wrong, wrong word, but you didn't want to see him because you think he funny, to sit there and tweak, and then he tweak back with you, and you don't like that shit? You better. 
People be crazy. Making it. People be crazy as hell. Like, like you said, y'all came to see me type shit. Even off them just saying that shit, they would have just been standing out. He probably wouldn't even fuck with them. If they wouldn't have said that first, bro. Um, no, no, no. So when he did that, I'm steady talking. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, Jersey wearing that nigga, Michael Jordan. Then he proceeds toward the stage. Mm. Uh, now it's threatening. Because why would you be proceeding toward the stage? And you're making threats, saying you would knock me out and what you would do to me. And so uh, I had a decision to make. I had to weigh my cost and I had to weigh my benefits. Well, what's the cost? Uh, man, you get your ass kicked, you can get hurt, these people could be upset. Uh, what's the benefit? Uh, you can ruin this comedy show and go viral and be another viral sensation for another six months because of this. Well, what about Dewberry? Dewberry just jumped off the stage. Oh, he'll be all right. I had to think quickly, so I had to make it. So I had to make a split. Hey, he's silly as hell for that, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Decision, because in my mind, this nigga standing up talking shit like he want to do something to me. Boy, this could be a perfect opportunity to conquer the internet and go viral. So wait, wait. Why was there a flower pot on stage in the first goddamn It, it was Christmas decoration. I told you it was an annual. <laughs> this isn't something. This, so just think, Crockett is not a big town, homie. So Thanks. something that they, something that'll break out 700 people in a small town is big. Mm -hmm. So this is an annual event. And trail riding is big in Texas. Mm -hmm. Extreme, this bigger than hip hop. That is facts. So this the trail ride community, homie. So uh, nigga, they wasn't just dressed up in hot dollar, homie. This thing was elaborate and, and elegant, homie. This this wasn't just no. So if you see the camera view, homie, you see this. It was it was shit set up around the stages. Uh, they had really decorated this. This, this was really a theme. Uh, they had they had best dress, homie. So this was a real. Uh, so in, in my mind, uh, uh, I get to take advantage of a situation and capitalize on it. You had got paid the back and up front. Yeah. It was on you. The money's on you. Yeah. You proceed to pull it out to let a nigga know you ain't getting no real money. Oh uh, no, nah. I let them niggas know that because in my mind I'm saying. They letting them disrupt class. Just like the teacher tells them, well, y'all get it out, I get my paycheck regardless. <laughs> so I'm letting them know, nigga, even though y'all doing this, nigga, bitch, ass nigga, I got the money regardless. So now the nephew starting to say, boo. So I'm saying, nigga, I don't give a damn about you two, nigga, booing, because now it's been, a, it's us three. It ain't about to cry out no more. So nobody's saying, say, man, y'all chill and sit down. So at this point, I don't give a damn about the show no more. Because in my mind, as a professional, somebody's supposed to remove them, not me. The I'm supposed to stop the show. Say, can y'all get them out? I could have done that. But why do that? Why not control the situation and take advantage of it and, make it and make it work for me? So the flower pot itself, where is that at? Is it just on a? They were all lined up on the whole stage. Okay. So they Christmas decoration. So yeah. if you see the flower pot, it's a Christmas decoration. So they were using whatever Christmas colors throughout this whole building. So every. I ain't gonna cap. If I was there, them two would piss me off, bro. Cause y'all really fucking up the vibe. It's just gonna be so much awkward after that. For y'all to tweak. Y'all basically be sitting there arguing. Like he said, it's about them three. It ain't even about the show no more. So they saying, fuck us. And let's just say they did defuse and sit back down. Charles White got to like figure out, how, you know, a professional, professional, professional know how to do that shit. But Charles White got to figure out how to basically get back, tap into his comedian side after being pissed the fuck off from some two dudes in the uh, crowd. But they would have personally made me mad. Like, bro, y'all fucking up everything. Everything was decorated. In the art of war, <laughs> grabbing that flower pot, you that hey, everything's fair game. Uh, uh, when somebody trying to hurt you, nigga, or somebody's pretending they gonna hurt you, anything's fair game. They kids, they mama, 
Okay. Hey, dog, you trying to hurt me, right? Yeah. And you, yeah, your mama for a game, nigga. Mm. So you actually chunk, do your like kid, you said. Your kids for a game, nigga, if you That's try facts. to hurt me. That's facts. Your little born baby, your innocent baby, we know your baby in that house, we still shoot it up. That's for a game when you trying to hurt me. The young man, uh, Kobe Bryant, um, were you looking at his? Were you looking at him in the eyes as this was going? As he was, yeah. But did you did you sense a threat? Yeah. From him, like. Oh, uh, I I don't have to sense a threat once you say a threat. I don't have to okay. sense it. You saying a threat. That's right. That's right. If you saying what you're gonna do to somebody, uh, they teach us in the license to carry class, nigga. You can't say what you go do to me, and you have that body size. <laughs> and you're telling me what you go do. That's what made me say, nigga, and I hit you in your motherfucking head. Because I was taught, as far back as I can remember, learning right from wrong, my mother always said, if you can't beat somebody up, you pick something up and you hit them in the head with it. I've been hearing that since I was a kid. I ain't gonna count, right? Some years ago, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fight. I instantly picked up the chair I was sitting in, bro. Hang! And it was a dude at that. It was a dude at that. I'm sitting in the chair, motherfucker. Ooh, I say what? Or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? What? I picked that motherfucker up. Hang! Went in there, bro. It, it's just the best thing I could do with it. I went for to sit there and hell no, I'm going. I know for a fact I'm finna hold the hell. So you finna hold this chair. You know what I'm saying? So we, yeah, we was taught that. So that's my first reaction. Most niggas want to fight. My first reaction is to grab something and hit you with it. So whenever I'm fighting, my reaction is to use a weapon. Never to have a fist fight. Never. My, none of my fights are never thought out to, with fists. It's always a weapon involved because I was taught that as a kid. You pick up something and hit them in the head with it. That was drilled in us as kids. You pick up something and hit them in the head with it. So that's my natural reaction is to have a weapon. As you see Dewberry, hop off stage, does that entice you to actually go further into this? Like throw uh -uh. this fire part? You was already on. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, I was wrong in the motherfucker to go further because my nigga been jumping. I fuck with that, bro. I'm so glad you just said that shit, bro. Oh my God, bro. So you know that you was wrong for putting pot to head, bro. You know you was wrong. Okay, all right, cool. I can fuck with that accountability. If it's one thing I love, it's accountability, bro. And then he sit there, sat there and he knew, even though I don't know if he finna tweak off me, but he said he was wrong for going first. So it don't matter. I don't give a fuck if Dewberry was off the stage, on the stage. He said he was wrong for going further. I was fuck wrong in the motherfucker to go further because my nigga done jumped into danger mm -hmm. and he out there by himself. So if I hit this nigga with this, they get to get my nigga. So that don't entice me to go further. <clears throat> I just thought to myself, oh, uh, nigga, I'm gonna take care of little aunt. Uh, make sure my, yeah, make, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take care of little aunt. Oh, uh, nigga, we gonna get. Even though it's weird for him to say that, because he making it like the threat. So it's like a, it's like he is attacking accountability, but he not. That's what I'm saying. He kind of wishy-washy about it. But I feel like he just secretly just admitted it. Don't just say because Dewberry jumped off the stage and was in the crowd. You was wrong. You was wrong for just going further in the dough. I promise you that shit would have went. Wouldn't have went nowhere if you would have just put the pot up, bro. If you, I mean, if you wouldn't have never picked that motherfucker up. Even if you picked it up, I don't even think they was on shit. But, yeah. Get my nigga a good casket. Uh, mama and them gonna be all right. Maplewood, got but nigga, God, nigga, shit. uh, yeah, 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 nigga, we, we, yeah, this, yeah, nigga, we all the way in. <laughs> yeah, we all the way in. How far into picking up the pot did you know you was gonna throw it? Like, had that already? Cause sometimes when I be in the mode, like, once I pick this bitch, it's already done. Like, I'm already deciding I, uh, what I'm gonna do uh, to it. I, I would go put it back down. Uh, into that nigga play like he would go come on stage. Now, I know he playing. Mm -hmm. I know this nigga really don't want to come on the stage. Mm -hmm. But he's saying things that I can take serious if I want to. It's just like a cop. 
my nigga. He kind of looking at you and know that's a toy gun. But if you pointed at him, he go shoot and play like it was a real gun. Even though you playing, you playing like it's a real gun. The cop know you a bullshit nigga playing, but he still kill you anyway. So that was my mindset. I know this bitch ass nigga just really doing this for show. Come on. He re- I know he doing it because he, he flinched and his woman grabbed him and he tried to push her out the way. I took advantage of the fact that he lunged at me by pushing his woman out the way. And I knew he was playing. So since you playing, bitch ass nigga, let's play, nigga. <laughs> bitch ass nigga, let's go viral. Shit. Yeah. Shit. I know he playing, homie. Why record podcasts on Zoom? <laughs> and he funny as hell. It's like he kind of smart for saying, like, ah, right, he pushing that out. So if he pushing her, he finna come to me type shit. But he funny as hell, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Really not trying to get to me. But- <laughs> yeah, shit. I know he playing, homie. I know he really not trying to get to me, but he done ruined my comedy show, and I can't fix it. So fuck it. <laughs> so <laughs> let's break the rest of the shit. So the the pocket's thrown. The pocket's thrown. It connects. I but couldn't the, recover in my comedy show, so yeah, I just but, said fuck it. So the microphone follows. Oh uh, well. And mind you, you connected to the speaker, so we hear all the little. Oh well. Oh well. Oh. I saw he was dazed from, from the pot, cause I hit that nigga good. Uh, I saw neither him nor Dewberry could just jump straight back on the stage and get in. <laughs> Both of them niggas was straight. Dewberry is sagging motherfucker, boy. That nigga sagging my, like my, a bitch. My nigga had to jump up backwards like this. <laughs> he had to jump up backwards like that. <laughs> that nigga there pulled himself up on stage. Oh, uh, oh, uh, listen. So I was waiting. I said, bitch, I was saying to myself, I'm not finna hit this whole ass. That's why I was waiting. I've timed it perfect. Uh, Cause I knew he was bullshitting, homie. Uh, so I'm gonna bullshit with him. Damn. Uh, but I'm gonna use weapons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, homie, they, uh, I'm, I'm a cool little nigga. Uh, yeah. But nigga, I'm gonna fool you go to fucking with me. I'm not, no, homie, you, you have to really hurt me if you go to fucking with me. If you argue with me and you the type of nigga who can't argue, you have to beat me up because of my mouth. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you really got to fucking with me. You have to hurt me because I'm going to hurt you for fucking with me. Uh, and I was trying to hurt that nigga. Yeah, that, that I didn't give a damn. Listen, I didn't give a damn about getting beat up. I want to hurt that nigga because he was fucking with me for no, for no reason. So I was so focused on that nigga I ain't see nephew running. Uh, so yeah, because I want to hurt that nigga, homie. So he was really gonna get hurt. Had ne- he, I would go, nigga, that trail was gonna hurt him next. Yeah, yeah before nephew, the, the, the microphone connected. That nigga Rook said, like, yeah, hey, yeah, like yeah. That, that microphone, like it, it sounded yeah, like yeah. it connected. Yeah, yeah. And then that required a nigga to, all right, let me hop up on stage. I seen Dewberry du- got back up there, and then you grabbed the chair. And uh, now, 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 now is now is Montgomery, Alabama. Now uh, we. No, 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 nigga. Uh, this. I-, I hope he asks about Dewberry running at the end. Where the fuck was he going? Dude was literally on top of you, punching you. Where did he go after that? Did he go get some and come back hand, hand, hand? Like what, 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 what the fuck was he bitching he was on? Ice Man King Parsons, <laughs> uh, the Fun Eric's. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the uh, no, nigga, the, 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 junk, the junkyard dog. I done went back to the old wrestling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I done went back to the old wrestling in, in my mind. Uh, and I had a knife in my pocket. But, but because I no longer, uh, because I no longer have that revolutionary tactical mind, uh, I never thought to grab the knife. They let me know I'm slipping. I never thought to grab my knife. I could easily tow some shit up up on that stage. But because I've been having fun, going to strip clubs, eating out, traveling, living a celebrity life, I never thought. So I'm not a dangerous guy anymore. Yeah, I used to be a little dangerous little motherfucker. Yeah, I ain't been going to the gun range. Uh, yeah, I ain't been breaking my guns down no more. Uh, that's just a problem. Okay. Problem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, so, 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 yeah, homie. So, uh, so, so that I, I, I even learned something, homie. Uh, nigga, I never thought to grab my knife. I could easily get up off me, bitch, ass nigga. Hold up. But do you really want to do that? Goddamn right, I want to do it to a nigga. <laughs> Hell yeah, nigga, I want a free kill on one of these niggas. Hell yeah, I want to do that. Nigga, bother me for nothing. You trying to hurt me for what I say? 
Yeah, I want to do that, nigga. Hell yeah, nigga. Hell yeah, I, I want to do I get it. it. Now, would you have had the inclination to uh, hit the wife with something had she got on the girlfriend with something had she got on the stage? Uh, I, uh, uh, if I had to re and do it again, I would have hit that bitch with the flower pot just to go oh, even more shit. viral. I think that I think that would have made more for a viral sensation had I hit the bitch with the flower pot, God. hit the nigga with the microphone, <laughs> and then catch nephew with the chill as he coming across. That's oh, the ideal shit. situation in my mind. Straight straight Mario Kart, nigga. Th- yeah, yeah, because they, 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 they all three was together. Yeah. Shit. And did and did none of them check each other in chill. You need man, just listen. Three bro. combo piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the nigga should have got the bitch should have got the flower pot. The nigga should have got the microphone, and, and nephew Odom should have got the chair. Now, as a curiosity, if you had your old utility belt for your old comedy shows, as far as everything you bring normally in your comedy shows, which one would you have grabbed just to de-escalate that situation? Like, nigga, don't make me like what? What? Because you ha- you. It's all part of your show. What would you Man, have grabbed? that motherfucking pig poke. I was just standing up there, that goddamn pig poke with that motherfucker. said, nigga, what's up, nigga? That pig poke intimidating by itself. That's a motherfucker. But boy, that motherfucking bar spray. <laughs> <laughs> that's a reach. Boy, that motherfucking bar spray. Cause normally, y'all done seen the show. Normally, I sit it right there, sit it right there, have the ninja stars right there. Uh, so normally, I have that shit in, in the beginning. I strategically was using those props for that situation. God damn. That's why I, that's why I would start out with all those weapons. Damn. For one, it was an intimidating psychological factor that it, it would use. So I was using it psychological intimidation. Uh, Works. On top of just in case I have to use these, I got them on standby. But the more I started getting into the gift of comedy and trying to understand stand-up comedy, I removed those crutches as well as I remove that thought of self-defense on stage. Aren't you, aren't you worried about bystanders getting hit with the bear maze? Like you don't hit the first row uh, of the crowd? Uh, I, I, when, when my life is in danger, no one else's safety is my concern. Look, I know that um, in life we all take L, it's not wrong with taking an L, but in this case, it'd be like, the choice away, take an L, take a W. I feel like him speaking how he's speaking about not having his stuff around that he usually have around, not come prepare him, not, um, going to the gun range, just his usual self being uh, as strict about protection of himself. The way he's speaking as if he know, like, he fucked up, he know he took an L. This whole shit would've been different if he would've been on his P's and Q's like he normally is, but he letting this shit fuck him up. So I feel like in his mind and in his heart, he know that he took an L type shit. I hear you. Well, my I life is in danger because, for one, my life shouldn't be in danger, and no one else is. Right. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the security of this plot, but let's go and go. Let's go. Let's keep walking through it. Um, uh, you know, we talked to Dewberry. He said, um, you know, as he got back on stage, he's focused on Kobe Bryant. And some nigga. Everybody focused on Kobe. Yeah, everybody. Bryant. But some nigga come out of left field. Lamar Odom. Do you see this? Yeah, Lamar Odom. Do you see Lamar coming out of left field? Uh uh-uh. uh. I only got. I only got yeah, are you focused on Kobe? Yeah. Oh, shit. Because, because, because Kobe is the threat that's proceeding toward me. He's the initial threat. Lamar Odom done went to the side. He coming, he coming down the baseline. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah, he coming from the baseline. Uh, <laughs> he must have went up the stairs. I got to rewatch. He make me want to go rewatch the video, but he must have ran and went up the stairs. He said, I ain't hopping my ass on no stage like that, bro. As he's running toward us, uh, it looked like he running at Dewberry. It looked like he running toward Dewberry, and he run past Dewberry and hit me. Uh, so let's talk about it, Charles, because you know, again, you're not you're not in your twenties no more. You know, to get again, it's been a while since so a nigga just randomly just you know Goldberg a nigga and spear t- spear a nigga. Like seriously, for you not seeing this coming and. Sometimes you normally have the time to brace for like, oh shit, let me brace for it. You focus on Kobe, Lamar coming across. Did you get time to brace for the, for whatever that, whatever that was? No, uh-uh. <laughs> you ever seen the quarterback, goddamn, he can throw that yeah, ball? Yeah, the blind side. Oh! The blind side. He don't even know, that, that would happen. <laughs> blind that, side. That would, that would happen. And boy, and boy, let me just say this. It seemed like it took forever to hit that ground. Oh, 
Oh, shit. Boy, it seemed like me and that nigga fell off a cliff and we were just falling <laughs> and falling and falling. And the force seemed like, and boy, all I could think about is, boy, what you gonna do when you hit that ground? Then the money came out. And I stopped thinking about what I was gonna do. <laughs> oh, my soul. <laughs> I was saying, put the money on, gang. I hate that he had the bread out, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Man, and I stopped thinking about what I was gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, shit. So, uh, yeah, when I hit that ground, home, I had to get, I had to, I had to immediately figure out a way uh, to not stay there because I gotta keep, I gotta find that money. So wait, wait, wait. Was the money in your hand or was it in it your pocket? Fell. If I fumbled the ball. Oh shit. And, and then it, 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 was, it was behind a line of scrimmage and I hadn't came through with the forward pass so it was considered a fumble. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, now this is some real diggy shit right here. This nigga said, as he's getting tackled, my motherfucking money. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. about this other shit? Where my pay? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, nigga, uh, yeah, yeah. uh. <laughs> Yeah, I was discombobulated when I came up off the floor, but somehow, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I ain't have my sense of direction. You don't know which way is north, south, east, or west. I just know to look for that money. Uh, and that nigga was choking me. And I wanted to start hollering, do man get this nigga off me! <laughs> but I couldn't, I couldn't say nothing. Uh, so yeah, homie, uh, that shit happening so fast, uh, nigga just trying not to panic. So niggas start choking versus start doing anything, just... Yeah, he poked me. He wasn't doing nothing, he just holding on to me. Oh, like like somebody else grab him. somebody else get him. He just holding on. Shit. He's, you know, you know how the big niggas do try to choke you out when they can't fight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He good, just trying to choke you. wrestling nigga. But, but, and, and it feel like he choking me because I got my chin chucked and he pulling hard. He, he pulling hard. So he feel like he choking me. And to Dewberry hit him in the mouth, Oh yeah, oh shit, yeah, we heard her. Yeah, yeah, till Dewberry split in my eye, bro. That's how, that's how he let me go. So that, I got up immediately, homie, when I fell on the ground. I got, I actually fell on top of him. All right, Dewberry sick. I, Cause I heard Dewberry saying something about in the background when I was listening to a little bit of the uh, live, saying, tell him something about show his mouth or something. But I still want to know, after you hit that man in his mouth, what did he go do? I hope he really say what he did, bro. Cause that's just, I don't know why that's just important, but it's, it's nice to know that Dewberry put his, his hands on somebody, bro, while his man was getting uh, choked out and beat up. Cause I know the other dude did come over there and look like he was hand, hand, hand. That's how I got up before, almost before he did. That's what big dude said, y'all was a little, little roll around. Yeah, happened. see I fell on top of him. I'm, so if you go look at that steel footage, I fell on top, I was on top. I immediately got up and he tried to grab my head, trying to pull, he grabbed, so he got me from that way at this angle, holding my head. God damn. Uh, were you not worried about your chain? Like, I know the money, but. Give a damn about that chain, okay, nigga. That's what okay. I put insurance on it for. I want that money. <laughs> ain't no insurance on that money. Yeah, ain't no insurance on that cash, on that cash money, god damn. Nigga, nigga didn't believe yeah, in yeah. sale, nigga, what the fuck? Yeah, ain't no, ain't no, no insurance. Uh, uh, homie, when you doing back end money, nigga, ain't no sale, nigga, when they <laughs> went. went. Uh, see, see, here, see, here's the thing about back end. Homie, when you doing real big events with these kind of promoters, nigga, most of the money they feel to pay you from the back end is the dough money. That's facts. Not the online money, it's the dough money, the VIP money, the 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 the, the bar money. So nigga, you gonna have five, they gonna try not to give you the one, fives, and tens. They gonna try not to, but shit, nigga, you gonna have a you gonna have a you gonna have a bankroll. Uh your front end might be a chick, your front end might be Zell. Uh but nigga, why you, that's why you be seeing them rappers coming from them shows and back in, they got $100,000, $70,000. That's sometimes how you gotta take it. So, I have to ask, as you're, you know, you know, kind of getting, gathering what's going on, the money, shit, Charleston, um, it seems on camera, some guys ran backstage. Like, the, the Kobe Bryant finally got backstage. We seen some hands throwing, like, like, somebody, somebody's punching somebody. Uh, only two people came on stage to fight was Lakers jerseys. The other people you seen, uh, nobody else was throwing punches because everybody was attacking Lakers jerseys. So I wasn't getting attacked. Lakers jerseys then was being attacked. And they wasn't being attacked. They was being restrained and contained. Okay. So 
uh, once I got tackled, homie, nobody threw a, uh, nobody threw a punch. What y'all seen Kobe Bryant was doing was trying to get in. We seen some, yeah, we it, seen the elbows flying. It, it, it looked like he was doing this. Yeah, you, that is easy shit. But homie, he wouldn't even know what in arm reach or reaching nobody. <sighs> That's why I said I need, now I really want to go see it again. But it looked like folks was throwing them bitches. Like he knew who, who he was hitting. He ain't look like he was trying to get in nothing, bro. Remember this, homie. We all know the cameras is going. So I'm showing out, they showing out. Yeah. We all putting on for the camera. God damn. Except the people from Crockett. The people from Crockett are the ones that bum rushing the stage to try to stop this shit. And those are the people in the white shirts. Yeah, there's a man with a cowboy hat, white shirt. One of the like, one, one, one. Man, he looked like Walker, Texas Ranger, goddamn. One, one, one of the promoters. Okay, yeah, yeah. He he did his goddamn thing. I don't know who he was, but he jumped. So quickly. so so when Kobe Bryant come up there to throw a punch, they restrained him. <laughs> nah, for real. When Dewberry hit that nigga and I jump up to start throwing punches, police got me. So nigga is so what y'all see backstage, uh, it was stopped immediately. It was nothing else. Once it got back, once I hit that ground and jumped right up, it was stopped immediately. All right, let's go and go through there, man. So, all right, the world sees this. I'm sure Barack Obama watching, like, oh, shit, my yeah, nigga yeah, Charleston. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the world is saying, like, why wasn't security secured? Why didn't you go to this venue at your level of fame with security? And why didn't the venue have security on stage waiting to see just in case? Because you're still Charleston White out in Crockett, Texas. Why weren't you questioning where is the venue security? even outside, outside of your own? Uh, yeah, I think I'm bad. He's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm a bad little old bitty nigga. Uh, and ain't nobody gonna do nothing to me. And I don't need no motherfucking security. And ain't nobody gonna do a motherfucking thing to me. Ain't nobody done nothing to me. They don't do a motherfucking thing to me. I ain't done nothing to nobody for nobody to do nothing to me. So in my mind, I don't need no motherfucking security, homie. Uh, why the venue didn't have security? Uh, because this is something they do every year, and it's never a problem. This is something they do in their town, amongst their people, and it's never a problem. Charleston White have done 57 comedy shows. It's never been a problem. It's crazy how all celebrities think they don't need security. I just will never understand that. Of course you need security, bro. And stop saying that you ain't never did nothing to nobody. People take words offensively, bro. He don't get that. I, no, I kind of do feel like he get that. But you got to understand, when you say certain shit, bro, some people take them as punches. That shit hurt. That shit make them feel some type of way. So now they want to attack. So he can't, maybe in that city that he talking about, he ain't did nothing to nobody. Okay. But you just never know who come out to see what show Nothing. You always need security, bro. But it's like something got to be eye opening for them to be like, all right, I, I need security. I ain't, shit ain't as sweet as I thought it was. So why would we expect this? Uh, DJ Academics had chimed in. Uh, he mentioned Dewberry like, man, uh, uh, technically when you have your partners there and your partners are there trying to, you know, handle business, you know, Dewberry did what he's supposed to do for his partner. But of course, when you have your partners there, you kind of see like, man, the lacks of security. It, the technically dude wouldn't even got to walk up to the stage. If let's say the right security is there. And I, mind you, I've seen you at venues with security before. I've seen you uh, with security. Does this change your mindset going forward as far as uh, shows uh, going uh, forward? That's when I was tactical. I stopped being tactical. Uh, Nigga, my mind. You kind of have to be nuts. Just say you're going to get security for now on, though, gang. Come on, bro. You don't need, you don't be needing this shit, bro. Especially not at a comedy show. Like, you don't need that. You need to be protected at all costs. You is the bag, my boy. Security. Nigga. Nigga, my mind don't need security. Nigga. Uh. <clears throat> So I have people that recommend security to me. So every now and then I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'll do, I do it, I'll do it, uh, for their concern. 
Uh, but my mind, nigga, I ain't concerned about no motherfucking security, homie, because I ain't done nothing to nobody. Uh, and I don't know how big I am. Yeah, I don't know how big I am or how big people perceive me to be. Uh, my, my homeboy, my homeboy, uh, he, he ain't my security. Uh, nigga, we want to live. It will kill to live, my nigga. So uh, that's our concept. So uh, would it be wise to get security? Yeah. Uh, going forward, will I have security? Yeah. Uh, but up until now, nigga, I ain't first see no security. Nigga ain't hit me in my mouth. Nigga ain't shot up my car. Nigga ain't done nothing to me. I done something to that nigga. He didn't do nothing to me. They didn't run on stage and get me. He wasn't trying to get on stage. I forced his hand to have to come up here. After I hit him with the flower plant, what was he supposed to do? Not get on stage? So nigga, didn't nobody come do nothing to me on stage. Nigga, nigga was heckling me in the crowd and got hit upside his goddamn head for heckling me and I wanted to go viral. What do you feel like you did to that nigga's pride? Crushed it. God. Who, you don't see him running no victory lap. I'm the only nigga on the internet running victory laps. <laughs> yeah, I got them. I'm the only nigga running victory laps saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody else, the criminal quiet. You reposted his video talking to, you know, you, re, you gave him the light to show like, hey, let me show y'all who this is. Well, guy. I've been asking him to show his mouth. Since Dewberry hit him in the mouth, I've been asking him to come talk on the camera and show his mouth. I'm showing me after I got it because I'm letting everybody know, nigga, I didn't get it. I gave it. I didn't take one punch. I didn't receive one blow. I gave it. They didn't run up on stage. He stood up, made some threats. I know they were some dry, empty threats, but they still threats, and you can't make threats. You made a bullshit move, like you were gonna push your girl out the way. I know you wasn't trying to do that, but since you made that move, I took advantage of the fact that you made a move and cracked you. H have you ever lost a fight? Hell yeah, I have. Nigga, I got into a fight with Big Troy one time. I was fucking his wife. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, you can't go with that kind of fight. Oh, uh, That's yeah, a different type of strength. Yeah, yeah I, I was fucking his wife, homie. Uh, and they had the club called Me at Point. And uh, uh, me and her were playing like she didn't have no hub. Like I was her real boyfriend, and I'm mine. Uh, so we at the club fighting. And I had two more girls who were with me named Chawana and Janae. Uh, they were the pretty group bras in school. Uh, so uh, somehow uh, she, she snatched their keys and threw them or something. And uh, boy, after the club, this is why I really don't drink and get drunk. Uh, after the club, I said, well, let's go get them motherfucking keys. Let's go to her house where her husband is. And he a big time drug dealer at the time. A uh, well-known nigga out of Stop Six. Uh, uh, in there damn fool. So we 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 go we go to, we go to their house. She she wasn't there yet. I'm in the car drunk, playing drunk or whatever. But I'm drunk. Man, all of a sudden I hear her voice, and I wake up and come out the car. Yeah, bitch. And I run. I listen. I run and jump on the back of her car, kicking the windshield. While her husband and all them niggas from Stop Six, all them old blood niggas from Stop Six, Doohickey and them was over there, all them niggas was over there. That nigga went upstairs and got his pistol. So now this time, they, they done called and said, man, that nigga Blue went over there with Troy and them tripping. And everybody know this nigga a fool. Uh, so he go upstairs and get his pistol and come back down. The nigga Doohickey tell him, Troy, you ain't got to shoot that nigga. You can whoop that little old nigga. Uh, he a big nigga, too. Uh, just two things stopped me. I, I don't drink to get drunk, and I stopped sagging my pants after this night. I should tell you why I stopped sagging. So as he coming to me, my niggas and them, my stepbrothers and them, they trying to put me in the car because they half-ass scared of this nigga, and they don't want no trouble with these gangbangers. When I'm fresh out the boys' home, out of TYC, so I still got a habit of seeing cuz and all that type of shit. So I'm over here, man, fuck them nigga cuz. So I done went to set tripping with these niggas. 
Yeah. <laughs> so listen, so these niggas scared. These ain't, the niggas that with me ain't no gangbanger nigga. They half ass scared. Boy, they trying to put me in the car. Boy, Big Troy get close to me. Gee, I can just imagine Charles the White being drunk and trying to tweak like that. Talk about some cubs and shit, bro. That shit probably funny as hell hearing him like that, bro. Looking stupid as hell saying that shit. Pants sagging and shit, like you said, funny ass. I say, what's up, bitch ass nigga? And I try to take two steps back and weave a punch, and my pants fell down around my ankles. Boy, I fell flat back on my back. Boy, that big old nigga grabbed me by my motherfucking legs. Come on, nigga. Pulled me to me and got on top of me and started raining down punches. I'm talking about raining down punches. Boy, I remember looking up at that big nigga. <laughs> You pants still second record? Yeah, oh. yeah, I'm, boy, I'm down there, I ain't got no shirt on. <laughs> them pants down there around the Michaels, and he's straddling me, raining down, punches. <laughs> boy, I'm trying to, right now, punches. I'm saying, get this nigga off me. And I'm saying, this nigga hit like a bitch, pow. <laughs> nigga hit like pow. That nigga got so mad, he tried to put his fang. He tried to find which one with my good eye and put it out. Then he tried to put his fangs in my eye. <laughs> Say, listen, the chick that I was messing with, she said, Troy, you don't have to do him like that. That's what stopped. He got up and said, bitch, what? And slapped the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> she saved you. Saved my motherfucking life. This is she is. She can say, I love her to death right now today. Oh, my soul. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my soul. He was going to deal with that bitch later, but now he going to deal with her now, bro. Yeah, she said, Troy, you don't have to do it. Like, that nigga bitch would and jump right up. <laughs> and she said, so, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I lost that fight. Yeah, yeah, I was about 21, 22 years old. So after that, I don't drink to get drunk, and I don't sag my pants no more. You saw when that nigga ran by Dewberry, Dewberry had to pull his pants up and he couldn't react. <laughs> yeah. That was a delay. So, 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 so. My boss specifically mentioned that I got the drink. Hey, that drink to get drunk, I remember somebody was telling me that when I was uh, younger and drinking this shit, because I don't drink no more either. And motherfucker was saying, like, uh, the problem is you keep drinking to get drunk. But I don't understand it, because I feel like liquor make you drunk if you drink enough, right? So that was always confusing to me, what what that even really mean, bro. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, I, I, I done lost a couple fights throughout life, but I ain't never been beat up. Other than that night, Big Troy beat me up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so I haven't had no humbling or uh, ass whooping, one of them ass whooping to make you think where you stop being cocky. I hadn't had no ass whooping. I hadn't had nothing to happen to me where it'll take my arrogance of shit talking. Uh, and that's what people want to do to me. They want to take my arrogance away. Uh, they wanted to do it to Ali. Uh, they wanted to do it to Mayweather. Uh, they wanted to do it to Kobe. They wanted to do it to Jordan. The, it's the arrogance, homie. And I'm glad you said that because um, the Cam Newton interview, it really sell, and I watched the whole thing, and I don't, I don't really watch interviews, but it really seemed like he was out to disprove he was. your character. He was. Uh, he, he, he was out to big dog me. Uh, and he hadn't really done a, 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 any real extensive research on, on me. So he, he, he had done a little research, but it wasn't extensive. Uh, he, he got an older cousin who, who was a big fan of mine who kind of hipped him to me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, he, yeah, they were trying, he, he, he was gonna big dog me. Uh, that's why he would say things like, I'm a moron. And I said, nah, I'm an oxymoron. So uh, uh, that's why it looked like me and him were dancing like this. Yeah. Just going, we, 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 never, we never was in sync uh, until toward the end. So, 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 so what I did, homie, is uh, I, I, I allowed myself to be vulnerable. Uh, so, so I didn't use the character to deflect. Uh, I, I allowed myself to be vulnerable. I answered every question. Uh, that's crazy, cause that's what I said. Like he's showing, he he don't under Cam Newton don't understand that he got a rare Charleston White on his platform, and this is how you choose to use him, bro. Like Cam really got to hold the L for the interview. That shit was horrible. How he tried to like 
Clay Charleston had a whole shit was about Dion the whole fucking time. Like I said before, like, bro, we need to move on from this Dion shit. You steady taking up for this shit. How he would come out and say, like, man, if you say fuck Cam, it's problems. Like, bro, he never said nothing about you. Chill the fuck out. You trying to make this shit about shit that is not. You could pick this man brain right now. He's allowing it, and you, and you just tweaking on some high school boy type shit, bro. Trying to show... I don't fucking know, man, but he got a whole deal for that. He, he, he allowed me to elaborate and go in great detail on things I've said. So so people got to see the man outside of the character, and, and that's hardly ever ever seen and done on the internet. Charles, I have to ask you, um, uh, when D.L. Hewley respond to the situation that just happened, um, you got D.L.'s attention. Well, you had his attention before, but yeah, that bitch had nigga been hating on me, my yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, so he tried, he seemed like he was waiting to chime in on this one. Uh, well, he right, I ain't no comedian. It, uh, I'm an entertainer. I can do comedian stand-up, uh, I can do internet, I can do movies. Uh, you put me in front of a camera, homie, and I entertain. So he's trying to put me in a box and saying I'm disrespecting the craft. No, I'm not disrespecting the craft. I'm the new comedian that'll kick your ass if you heckle me too long or we end up fighting. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm the comedian that'll hit you across your motherfucking head, nigga. You heckling me too motherfucking long. Somebody get this nigga. Why is this nigga in here for? Why ain't nobody got him out of here? So I'm that nigga. And nigga, if you come and try to scare me, nigga, you can't unscare me. Uh, nigga, I'm on attack. Yeah, we live in a post uh, Will Smith slap era to where how close, this is for all comedians coming up. How close do you let a nigga get to talking and coming up to you before a nigga do something. Like, how, yeah. How, once, a nigga, once a nigga threatening you, once a nigga voices lie out. So here's a secret YouTube hack. I ain't even see the DL Hughley though. I seen that he said something, but I didn't know what he said. But for some reason, I thought it was positive. I don't know why I even thought that shit. But I did see that they said DL Hughley commented on this something. I'm gonna go see what he said, some shit. Or well, if y'all mad at this far, fuck what you tell me what DL Hughley said, bro. Times on your and y'all argue, and he proceeding to Oh, well, he just said what D.L. Hughley said, though. He said that he, uh, said he disrespecting the crowd or some shit. You attack. <laughs> you don't, he you first, don't. not last, guys. Listen, homie, yo, there are signs. There are warning signs to let me know that you possibly want to hurt me. Your voice done went up. Your angry expressions, your body language. Your body tone, your movements. Once you proceed toward me and we're not in a friendly or favorable state, then I can only assume that you are trying to attack me. Why are you proceeding toward me? So I'm going to attack. You don't let no nigga get up in no arms, this and no arm read. You attack, homie. Come on now. Um, I have to ask you. Uh... What did you yourself learn from this whole scenario? Uh, it was a long car ride home, or not long, let's just say you got back to Dallas, but were safely unscathed. Uh, you had time to think about it, you know, a day or two. He really, I already know what he's gonna say. He really done said it five times in it already that he need, I would think he said that he basically need to get back to his shit. He need to have security, bro. What did you personally learn from this scenario as far as what to do going forward, how to, how to handle hecklers, how to, you know, what, what did you learn to move forward in this scenario? Uh, the black people. Damn. <laughs> the black people will wipe each other out. Uh, I'm saying so. Before we die out. So we're, 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 we're not, we're not going to die off. We're going to kill each other off. So that's what I learned, number one. Uh, the, the second thing I learned is uh, I need to do what Deion Sanders did. Uh, so that's why you see me back uh, in dealings with, with Aiden Ross and Kit. Uh, I learned that it's best to sell out that you can't save black people. Why you want to blow me right now, bro? Why you, why you want to play right now, bro? And I was thinking, 
Even though obviously that shit was fake, or I don't want to say fake, but he didn't really have no real ill feelings toward Aiden Ross. But I was thinking, why you instantly let Aiden Ross on your live, bro? And y'all supposed to be, you think he this weird kid pushing this agenda that you really don't even agree with. That shit, that shit was a little weird to me. And I was going to react to it, but I was like 30, I probably like a minute, nah, I probably like 30 seconds into that shit. And I turned it off, bro. Like, I'm not finna react to this shit, bro. Because I truly don't even fuck with Aiden Ross anyway and what he put out. And you sit here and say, what's up, nephew? I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I would just prefer them to argue or something. But I'm just like, nah, G. I just can't. But him saying this right now, it's bullshit, bro. Uh, I learned that I owe Deion Sanders an apology. Best thing he ever did was leave Jackson State and go to Colorado and run to the arms of them white people so his kids can be safe, his property can be protected, and he can get the money that he so deserves for being a black coach coaching for white people. The money that he deserves for being their coach. Because they'll never give him what he deserves, but he do deserve something for working for them. So, uh, I learned that uh, I don't want to be down. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to be down. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's almost wise and smart if you're a black person uh, to sell out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I learned, homie. All but right, when well. I when I come back home and look at everything, I say, you know what? Had I took that deal with them white folks, none of this shit would have happened. Because the white people would have made sure I was protected there. That is facts. The white people would have made sure that the, 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 the reputation of the, the event would have stayed intact. That is facts. Uh, so I'm letting white people know I'm, I'm ready to sell out. <laughs> I'm, uh, I recorded and edited my 45 minute podcast. His ass trolling, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know, but his ass saying anything. Like, bro, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say at the end anyway. It's finna go off. <laughs> You're going to upset some people saying uh, If y'all want me to if y'all get a dress, get a small. <laughs> oh, shit, no. No, shit. Oh. <laughs> uh, I yeah, he trolled like a motherfucker, y'all. Yeah. He said that signal right there was the y'all know I'm fucking around signal right there, bro. For eight eight size shoes, so I don't know if the heels run small or big, but I wear a size eight man. <laughs> uh. <laughs> not, 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 not. <laughs> this wouldn't that wouldn't happen if I were white people. Oh man, none of that would have happened if I were white people. So it's best to go be with white people. So you can, so you can, so you can, so you can prosper, and uh, be progressive, because I don't see, I don't see too many black people being prosper and, and progressive, just dealing with black people. All right. With that being said, uh, uh, Charles, appreciate you for responding to that scenario right there. It's a, a black hand. You came on one scale. Shout out, Dewberry, Big Dewberry. Uh, hold on, real quick. I have to ask, would you, would you go back uh, to Crockett Tech? <coughs> yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I'm offering to come back and do a free show. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's actually a good uh, cons consolation prize. Yeah, yeah, I'm offering to come back and do a free show. The Flower Pot Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna write my wrongs when I, when I know I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah! Okay. When I know I'm wrong. Yeah! I know I'm wrong, though. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, he know. He know. Man, Charles, you were, hey, again, people saying, man, you were real when you stood on business. Uh, God damn it, but a lot yeah, of comedians uh, would have did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had said I wasn't coming back on here no more. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, for, because of the Twisted Black shit. Yeah. Uh, Twisted Black don't know me. Uh, he's never met me a day before in, 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 in life. So uh, for him to be interviewed on his podcast and the title read as if he know me, it meant I'll never, he ain't never met me. Twisted Black was in prison the entire 12 years. I was in the community working, so he knows nothing about the, he knows nothing about me. Uh, he's a guy who I watched in a city who I see as one of the biggest losers in the city because he's celebrated every time he's come home from prison. But they can't support him to get him where I'm at. 
You see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. Nigga, he have all, he, he, he's been to prison four times, and he's had four welcome home parties. Uh, he's abandoned his children on four different occasions. His wife left him. His mother died. So all of these elements have gone along with him while in prison for people to come celebrate him. All right, man, I'm gonna stop right there. He said he was wrong. I'm, man, I'm so happy to, to, to see the accountability in this man. That's why his vibration is low. That's why he's not being funny because I can see in him that he feels he fucked up. He feel he fucked up. He threw, he threw that pot and when he just said that shit about black people, destroying black people, low key, he was a part of the problem that night and he did not, he, and he see that he was on the side that he do not like to see from black people, bro. So that really took him out of a character that he did not like, bro. He did not like that shit. He knew, he know, he shit talked the most. So when people shit talk to him, he should be able to take it more than anybody, bro. Come on, man. I, I fuck with the accountability, bro. Because he was 100% uh, wrong for throwing the pot. The argument could have just been an argument. Um... If he gonna continue to do shows, he just needs to learn how to deal with motherfuckers who talk and say, oh, I ain't fuck with them over, bake their ass a little bit and say, I ain't fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. Don't even spend too much energy on that negativity ass shit, bro. But yeah, now it makes sense why his vibration though. He came on here to say, his, his tell the story, but to say that he know he wrong. And I fuck with that, that he not on him making it. Even though he kind of was twisting, like you threatening me, so that, but he know, he like he said, it was empty threats, bro. So I attacked that man, and he really wasn't on shit. He was just a barking puppy, bro. He was just a, a barking chihuahua. I wasn't going to do shit. So, yeah. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. And catch me on the next reaction.